Have you ever wondered if you can have camels in tropical environments? This is our topic on today's Camel Q&A. This is the Camel Connection Podcast. Welcome to our weekly Camel Q&A. This is where you ask a camel question and we answer it. I'm Tara. And I'm Russell. And together, with other camel experts, we answer your camel questions. Welcome back to another Camel Q&A. Hello everyone. Thanks for being here again and tuning in. Um, these Q&As have been proven popular. Oh, very actually. Yeah, there's a huge list now. Um, but don't forget that you can still ask your question because, yeah. I mean, we've got lots of these to do forever, indefinitely. <laughs> That's it. Until we run out of questions, maybe. Well, um, is that ever possible? No, I don't think so. I- but don't forget, you can go over to our website, camelconnection.com, and ask your camel question now. Why are you mm. listening to this, maybe? Yeah. Or maybe you're already on our website. Open yeah, up a it. new window and ask your question. There you have it. Cool. So today, today's topic and question is actually about can camels live in a tropical environment? Mm. And we actually, we've got a few of these questions, so I'm not going to read a question because a lot of people have this question. Um, and actually the funny thing is, is people say to us, um, like we live in Australia and people say, oh, so you guys are from Darwin, which is a very Mm. tropical area. Mm. And they just assume that that's where the camels are. I don't know why. Yeah. (laughs) Maybe there's some movie that depicts that. Um, but it's like, no, we're, we're, we're from here, which is, you know, down South in, in, in Australia. Um, so can camels live in a tropical environment? Russell, I know you've had experience. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Would you like to... I mean, there's... Tell your story, maybe, and oh. then we will go on to some other... Some clients that we have that we know that they have camels. Okay. Uh, well, yes, I did t- take some camels up uh, just outside of Darwin. I had property out over there. And um, it wasn't all that successful, to be honest. And there's a couple of reasons why. Okay, tell us what happened. All right. So, so the camels that... lost condition, and uh, and also. Why do you? What do you put that down to? Okay. Uh, well, this is this is a, it's a big issue. Um, I think actually it's got a lot to do with the soil. Right. And uh, and the lack of minerals and vitamin uh, minerals in the in the soil. Uh, it's pretty depleted soil. Having you know, normally they get around about one to one and a half two meters of rain mm. per wet season. So the soil is pretty leached. Um, and so the camels were actually feeding on the bush plants, but uh, yeah, they just weren't putting on any any condition. Uh, they lost condition. So, what sort of bush plants are you talking about? Well, just the native bush up there. Uh, okay. Just yeah, the, the stuff that we the would... woodlands stuff that's out, out there. Okay, yeah. but I'm wondering if that same stuff, if it was in a different environment, further down south, if if they'd probably... well, it wouldn't be further down south. Right, that's what I was checking. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, that that was sort of the experiment that I did. Um, it was a situational thing. It's what I could do at the time. Of course, I imported lucerne, but again, I don't know exactly where that lucerne was growing, mm. and uh, and what sort of soil type it. Lucerne hay, yeah. That was there, yeah. So um, yeah, I, I quickly. Realised that the camels weren't doing what well. What was the period of time you had these camels in those? Oh, they were there for a good year. Oh wow! Well. So yeah. they were probably in good condition when they got there, and by the end of it. Well, by the end of it, look, I mean, you know, I was so glad to get them out of there. Yeah, uh, they, were they miserable? Um, Did they seem miserable? Um. Yeah. Now reflecting back on it, yeah. Look, I mean, they certainly weren't, you know, thriving, uh, thriving as such. No, and um. I think if I had have had them there for much longer, then we could have ended up with some serious issues. If and not, um, they could have died. And they were young camels, right? They were young camels. Yeah, which yeah. I think also has um, a lot to do with it as well. Because young camels, as, the, as young camels grow, they do this, this, I call it the fat skinny thing. It's like they'll put on, they seem like they're growing and putting on good weight and then they'll get super skinny because they're growing into their weight, so to speak. And then, And it's actually a bit of a... A natural stressed 
thing for them to grow as they mm. do because mm. they just we've seen it with a lot of our young camels and then they get to the age of about four or five and then they start actually piling on the weight properly mm. um yeah we've seen that with our young camels so i think young camels would have a lot to do you know like i think the adult camels maybe would thrive a little bit better um but it will go in that into yeah that area. i think look i mean you know if you're prepared to uh import into those sorts of areas like mm. i'm only talking about northern australia there um import um you know good quality lucent or something like that um then yes you've, you've certainly you know you're certainly on the mark mm. i think mm. um but you'd have to also supplement with the minerals as well. And um, yeah, diet would have to be a major consideration of what you're actually doing. So we have a client who, a couple of clients that have camels in the tropics. Um, and I like just from talking with them, I have, because I'm interested as well, it's like, you know, how, you know, how, how the camels go in those sort of environments, mm. just from your past history with doing that. And, um, from that, it was a lot of trial and error um, and trying to get feed balances right mm. and trying to get salt intake and minerals. And, you know, they're, they're also, they tend to get a lot more skin issues. Um, oh, yeah. Now, that's something else that I want to talk about. Too, go ahead. That I saw. Yeah, because you know, we came into the, the wet season where it's hot and humid. Mm. And, uh, you know, you're nearly talking about saturation point of humidity um, plus the insects. And the bacteria yeah. lives in the soil, but it comes to the surface. Well, where... that's another one. Yeah, yeah that's a, that's <laughs> another situation, and uh, your fungal uh, issues that you can have Foot as well. Foot fungus, yeah. Um, well, all over the body. Yeah, um, I've seen that. So hair loss uh, with fungal mm. issues there. We saw it in um, Thailand too. Remember yeah. that? Yeah. Um, but I mean, again, you know, like I mean, if you're on top of these things, you know, and you do need to be on top of it. Um, then um, yes, there's no reason why you can't have the camels mm. up there, but you'd, you'd have to be well and truly on top of the feed issues and the humidity and the fungal and the bacterial. And... So it, basically it has to be really well managed. So yeah. here we're in a bit more of a luxurious position and obviously in any arid desert kind of environments um, where the camel is fairly self-sufficient. Um, and here we're, we're on top of camel's health, but not as much as we would be if we were in a tropical area. Um, so I think that's the difference is they're just a bit less, because it's not their ideal environment, mm. um, they're less self-sufficient. So you have to be more on top of their, um, the, the, yeah, like you said, their diet, their mineral intake is an absolute must. And actually we've solved a lot of problems with our clients and their camels having lots of skin issues and um, just health issues, not putting on weight, those sort of things, just through mineral, mineral supplements, yeah. which that mineral recipe and how to feed it out is written in our Camel Husbandry ebook, which you can go get over on our website. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, um, so yeah, we, we've got two situations where... in tropical environment camel mentors in tropical environments um because we we have very we have basic camel husbandry requirements but it doesn't go into the extent and needs for the tropical stuff although a lot of stuff you know things like the minerals and all that sort of it stuff can it anyway. can actually de you know really affect the camel's health on a, on a very positive note so um you know that can camels live in a tropical environment yes We've absolutely seen it, yeah. and um, we see... Well, I mean, let's face it, you know, they've got camels over there in Bali. Um, they've got camels Thailand, up in we went Thailand. there and trained they've some camels. They've got them in Broome, they've got them in Vietnam, they've got them in various mm. other locations. But you do so, see a lot of health, like, I mean, I'm just, when we went to... We see a lot of skin issues that obviously comes from internal. There's a lot of When we went to Thailand, um, there was like lots of things they had to change, mm -hmm. um, but that's fine because we mentored them through that, and you do see uh, them not looking so great. The camels that are that are that are overseas, 
Um, but you know that that's just it's all knowledge it's all obtainable mm -hmm. and so that it can be managed so if you're considering that obtain as much information as you possibly can and make sure that the camels that you do get aren't sick to start with yeah, <laughs> and aren't underweight to start with because yeah. that would be asking for trouble in my opinion yeah I mean you know it's sort of like buying a car uh, in some ways I mean you know, if you're buying a camel um, and you want to check it out for the, you know, make sure that it's healthier, well, if uh, the owner who you're buying from doesn't agree, you to, doesn't agree to you doing, say, stool testing, uh, doesn't agree parasitic to tests are very par important, parasites, um, or even a blood test, um, you know, any sort of uh, test, especially in the training side, if they're saying that it's trained camel, well work that can work and okay? make sure that it actually functions and works according to how this operator says that it, that it does um and uh, yeah you know you've got every right and if they don't if they say oh no we're not going to do that well my suspicion you know would be of uh, well what have you got to hide um what's the problem why, why can't i have this camel stool test, you know, for parasites. Why can't I uh, get a blood sample just, uh, you know, from the vet if I want to, if I'm really serious about buying that camel? Mm. I'd uh, recommend that to everybody, and even mm. getting head scans for osteodystrophy as well. Big yeah, head. That's yeah. that's a whole other subject. But um, you know, now you guys know. For those, and thanks for those who who continue to ask a question and ask the question. And I love this platform because it gives us a chance to. Not only, like, I mean, we get lots of emails weekly about, you know, camel questions. Mm. And it's so nice just to be able to put this out there because who, if you've got a question, no, you know, there's no doubt in my mind that at least, you know, 10, 50 other people have the same question. So um, don't be afraid to ask your question because that helps you and helps everybody else as well. Mm -hmm. No, exactly. Yeah. Great. Okay. Well, thank you so much for tuning in for another camel Q and A. And don't forget, like I said, you can actually ask your own camel question simply by heading over to our website camelconnection.com and clicking on the camel. What is it called? Ask a camel question button. Ask a question. Yeah. That's yeah. It. yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. All we'll right. catch you on the next one. Thank you. See you later. Bye. Bye. If you found this camel Q and A helpful. Please let us know. Leave a review wherever you're listening from. From, from. Do you have a camel question for us? Head over to camelconnection.com to ask your camel question now. now.